Hey, everybody. I am Kevin Ioli. Welcome to Yahoo Sports. Uh, me and my guests are about ready to head down to uh, Park MGM for the UFC 266 news conference, but we got a bit of news uh, to take care of. So I am joined right now by UFC President Dana White. Dana, it's been an eventful week already. Uh, how you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good. Yeah. So uh, Nick Diaz uh, made news yesterday. He is uh, scheduled to fight Robbie Lawler in now a middleweight fight, not a welterweight fight, five-round middleweight fight uh, on uh, the main card of UFC 266. We were all sitting at Apex waiting to talk to Nick yesterday. He does not show, but he did do an interview with ESPN. And I want to start by asking you about what he said. Uh, a couple of interesting things he said, but let me, the first thing is, he wasn't too keen on fighting Lawler. He said he should be fighting Kamaru Usman. Uh, this was his uh, quote about uh, Lawler. He said, quote, this doesn't make sense for me to go in and fight Robbie Lawler again. I don't know why I'm doing this. This should not ha happen. Whoever set this up is an idiot. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why this happened. I should be fighting Kamaru Usman and that's it. Um, you told me just before we started recording, you hadn't heard what he said. What's your reaction to hearing that? You think you should be fighting Kamara Usman? I, I personally don't, but he does. What and what about you? You you know, you know what I've been saying lately. Kamara Usman is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Okay? Masvidal Weiss, uh, Gilbert Burns, Tyron Woodley, RDA, Damian Maya, Leon Edwards. I mean, the list of guys that this guy has beat is unbelievable. And and the way that he beat him. He is the, the world champion, right? In that division, and he is the pound for pound best fighter in the world does anybody out there think that nick diaz that's who he should come back and fight after not fighting for seven years yeah that would be an idiot that would make that fight when you hear him one of the other comments he said which i i thought that was one of two money quotes in this interview that uh and to give credit brett okamoto was the one that did the a really good interview with uh nick uh the other thing uh that he said was quote all the people around me and all the money and all the sponsors they won't let me get away from fighting there's things i could do but it's not going to work out i might as well just go out and take my punches um you know, some people would hear that and say, you know, maybe this guy shouldn't be fighting. What do you, is that just Nick being Nick when you hear that, those comments? Yeah. When, when, when does Nick not say crazy stuff? Nick Diaz, so, so Nick Diaz came to me in, in, in Houston. We all sat down. He wanted to fight. Okay. I said, well, we'll reach out to you. We'll send you a phone. We start going back and forth with opponents. We end up with Robbie Lawler. We send him a bout agreement. He signs it. Goes into camp to start training for Robbie Lawler. And now here we are two days before the fight. And this is a bad idea. Yeah. It's something else. Um, and, you know, the other thing that was weird to me, and, and I know in the back in the day, you used to get upset about this. I remember I was at the press conference when uh, he didn't show up for the GFC, GSP press conference and you really lost it. And I wrote in my column today, you know, you kind of have changed in that regard. You know, you don't lose your cool over those kind of things anymore. And, you you know, you haven't, uh, when Nick made the, what I think is a strange request on Fight Week to change it from 170 to 185, you just went with that. Uh, do you know anything about what was going on there? Is it, is it your speculation that he just didn't want to? We didn't just go with it. I mean, we, Robbie Lawler was in the air. So we had to talk to Robbie Lawler first. Robbie Lawler landed, talked to him. He obviously wasn't happy about it. I mean, he landed at 182. He probably would have came in in the 90s if, if, if he was going to fight at 85. But, but Robbie is, is a gamer. He's a fighter. And, and he took the fight. He accepted the fight. Um, now, every time that I booked the Diaz brothers, when I was younger and just getting to know the Diaz brothers, you know, you, you, don't, you don't see this coming. So I used to lose my mind and go crazy. I know exactly what to expect or not to expect. I don't know what to expect going into a, a, a Diaz fight the week before, you know? I miss that old Dana that used to go crazy like that. <laughs> now you save it for old to go crazy oh, anymore. That's about it. <laughs> so, anyways, well, before we move on from Nick Diaz, I, I mean, let, let's take the fight. Let's assume they both make it uh, uh, to the octagon uh, and, and they square off. What kind of fight? They fought 17 and a half years ago, 2004. What kind of fight do you think that they can put on? Who knows? I mean, I know what Robbie Lawler's going to bring. 
in case you forgot about Robbie Lawler, go to UFC's Instagram today. They have a Robbie Lawler highlight reel. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Insane. You know what Robbie Lawler is going to show up and what he's going to do. You know, what Nick Diaz is going to show up and, and what's going to happen. I don't know. But from history, what history has shown me, the Diaz brothers come to fight. Yeah. You know, there was no doubt about that. You know, let, let's move on. Uh, I think the main event is an interesting fight. Alexander Volkanovsky uh, versus uh, Brian Ortega. He's getting a second crack at the championship. Um and there seems to be some bad blood, uh, you know, between those two. Um, you know, Ortega failed kind of badly. I mean, you know, I, I had picked Max Holloway to win that fight back in 2018 when Max was a champion. But no way did I see Max Holloway destroying uh, Ortega the way he did. Um, from from what you've seen of Ortega's growth since then, he had the one fight against the Korean Zombie. Uh, do you think he's better ready for you know you know for the the pressures of a championship fight than he was last time? Yeah, 100. percent Um, I love everything about this fight. You know, um, when you get two of the best fighters in the world in their prime facing off for a world title, there's nothing better than this. This is, this is why we're all fight fans for fights like this, this Saturday. You know, and you know, Volkanovsky, uh, you know, was getting a lot of credit now because obviously you beat Jose Aldo and Max Holloway twice and you know, you're going to get a lot of credit. Uh, but I, I said to him, and I want to ask you the same question, you know, Brian Ortega, you know, he, he's been known as a jujitsu person, but he fought the Korean zombie, Chan Sung Jung. Basically, he fought the zombies fight. If you go into that fight, and you say, how would the zombie want Ortega to fight? It would be stand in front of me and, and trade. And yet Ortega won that fight going fighting the zombies fight. Do you did you see that as a sign of growth on the part of uh, Brian? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, one of the hard parts for Ortega is he came in red hot. I mean, right from day one, he had a lot of hype behind him. Uh, he was an exciting fighter to watch. Uh, he's this unbelievable jujitsu guy, but he had an incredible chin and liked to stand and bang. Um, you know, so, 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 so he had a lot of hype coming in. And, you know, I think he's older now. He's wiser now. He's got a lot more experience and timing is everything and this is the perfect time for this fight to happen for the title you know uh max holloway plays a a key role in this division of course you know and he's been sensational um and and both guys this week have mentioned holloway is probably in their future should they win the fight what is going to happen with holloway next is he going to fight yair or what what are the plans for max at this point i don't know we're we're still listen I, i got so much stuff going on right now this week getting this fight off You know, then we got Abu Dhabi and then Madison Square Garden. If you look at how hard it is in the fight business to keep fights together and do all this stuff, and then you look at what has happened in the last two years with visas and borders shut down and COVID and all this other stuff, you know, I'm taking it fight by fight. You know, (laughs) I know you guys love to get on and say, hey, what about this? What about that? What about this? Not even thinking about any of that stuff right now. Well, you know, one of the fights that is happening this weekend, and you mentioned a couple of the issues that are going on there, borders and whatnot, was uh, uh, Nazrat Hackbarast and uh, Dan Hooker. Uh, Both guys had trouble uh, getting into the country, Um, and so apparently both are arriving today. I don't know if either one of them is here yet, but both are arriving. uh, We're taping this on Thursday. Um, So question for you, first of all. Do you give them any consideration? Basically, they're going to have to get off the plane after flying many, many hours and go cut weight. Do you give them any consideration? Do what you did for Diaz and Lawler and say, okay, we'll make it a 165 fight just because of, of the circumstances? Nobody's asked for that. Yeah, nobody's asked for that. Listen, both of these guys are absolute studs. They're both saying they're going to make weight and they both want to fight. What does it say to you what both of these guys have gone through, Dana? I mean, that is incredible. You know, Dan Hooker has been pretty amazing like he talked about you know last time he had to stay in Abu Dhabi for six weeks after the fight you know he gets knocked out in the first round and then he can't go home for six weeks and then he quarantines for two weeks in New Zealand when he gets there I mean the commitment that these guys have to make to be in Nazareth's mother just died and um, you know now coming over to fight I mean what does that commitment say to you what they're going through to to fight in this uh, bout yeah it's incredible I, I say it all the time that these guys are special these guys are different they're built different than other human beings are and uh you know 
that's that's why they participate in this sport. Laura Murphy is going to challenge uh, Valentina Shevchenko in the co-main event. And uh, I asked, uh, excuse me, I asked Valentina this question yesterday. You know, she has been bet up from minus 1,200 to minus 1,500. I think if uh, Laura Murphy wins, it would be the third biggest upset by the odds in UFC history, uh, GSP and Matt Sarah and then Ronda Rousey and Holly Holm. And I, I asked Valentina, uh, how do you avoid what happened to Ronda? You know, Ronda was, you know, dominating everybody, got right to the top. Then it was like she fell off the cliff. Um, how did Valentina, you know, or anybody, but, you know, let, let's use Valentina in this case. How do you avoid what happened to Ronda? I mean, it seemed like uh, Ronda was great. She beats Betch Kohei in 34 seconds. The next thing you know, she she's getting pummeled by back-to-back -back fighters and retires. How, how does one avoid that kind of ending? One of the things that Ronda did is um, Ronda tried to do it all at the same time. She believed that she could juggle all these balls up there. You know, she was doing movies. She was doing appearances. She, she never said no to anything. She would do anything that came her way. And, you know, everybody in the division was gunning to beat Ronda. They're all training to beat Ronda. Um, you know, Ronda would film a movie and then come back and start training two weeks before the fight and doing things like that. Uh, you know, I think Valentina is, 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 is working all the time, staying busy in camp. Um, but you, you, you look at a girl like Lauren Murphy, she's grinded her way to the top. You know, she deserves to be here. And one of the things that makes her very dangerous is more than half of her wins are by finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's got like eight or nine knockouts. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a 125 pound girl and you can knock out, you know, your, your opponent, the, the way, the way that she has, she's a dangerous fighter. Do you think, you know, I know Valentina has lost twice to Amanda, but both times were, you know, razor thin margins. And, and of course she was fighting up in weight. So advantage to uh, Amanda. Do you think there's an argument that could be made that Valentina deserves to be in the GOAT conversation for female MMA fighters? Yeah, they're two of the two of the best women to ever fight in combat sports, two of the greatest women ever. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're neck and neck. I mean, people have been asking me nonstop, if they both win their next fights, would you do them again? And it's funny that people are asking that. Normally when somebody's won two already, you know, there's no really, not really a need to see that fight, but people do want to see that fight again. Right. Do you remember your thought on Amanda and Valentina too, especially that was the fight in Edmonton. I don't know if you remember it specifically, but I know, I know I thought Amanda had eat that out, but a lot of people that I respect thought Valentina won that fight. Uh, do you remember how you saw that one? I do not. I don't remember. You know, it was, it was so close and so, uh, so crazy of a fight. Um, how does Lauren Murphy beat her? I mean, in your opinion, like if Lauren Murphy wins this, it seems like Valentina, you know, her arm bar with Juliana Pena, yeah, you think of the different ways that she's won fights. I mean, it's just been pretty amazing. Um, you know, that, you know, the versatility she shows, how does someone attack a fighter like that? I mean, where's the weakness? No, it's a good question. I mean, yeah, she, she's done it all. And, and, and she looked like an absolute savage in her last fight. So, um, you know, that, her, uh, Laura Murphy's camp had to go in and watch a lot of tape and try to find a, you know, a kink in that armor. I, 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 we'll, we'll find out on Saturday if, uh, if she can do it. Listen, she's got the power. She's knocked women out. Uh, she's got, she's got eight or nine knockouts. Like I said, she's won a fight by submission. So she's got a ground game. Um, you know, she's got to get in there and implement whatever the game plan is that would be Valentina Shevchenko. Sure. Not many people have figured that out yet or know it, but maybe yeah. maybe her team has. And we'll see. That'll be interesting to see. Just go on to a couple uh, of other issues. Uh, I just wanted to uh, check with you on. Um, Cyril Gaon uh, won the interim championship uh, over Derek Lewis. Uh, then his wife had a baby. Have you had any communication now? Is he ready to get back in? Because I, I know you want to make uh, Gaon and Francis Ngannou. Um, have you, has he gotten back to training? Do you know if anything is going on there? Yeah, we should be announcing that soon. Okay. Do you anticipate that being this year or next year? Next year. Next year. Okay. All right. I didn't know if there was a chance they might fight in December, you know, get kind of get up. I yep. know you're getting on the, on the end of it. Good. That'll be uh, that'll be a fun fight. Um, 
And then, you know, the other thing I wanted, I wanted to follow up on is uh, Nate Diaz, you know, I, I, so we talk about the Diaz brothers and Nate seems like he's fallen into now a little bit of a rhythm. He's coming back and fighting it, um, on a more regular basis than he had for a while. Has there been any conversations with Nate and uh, do we have any plan for him? Um, yeah, there, there's nothing right now. I know we're talking. I know Nate wants to fight. Um, so we're talking right now. And then Dana, I want to I want to end uh, with this. You know, I saw uh, um, Ari Emanuel uh, made a comment the other day. He was talking about you know the future, and he was talking about the business. And you know, he was saying you know with all the streaming services that are coming up, uh, basically uh, there's more competition than ever. That that's only going to bode uh, well for you guys. Now I know you're with ESPN for what I think three or four more years, right? Um, so it's going to be a while, but when you see what the NFL is doing, where they're, they're breaking it off and they give, you know, Amazon something, you know, we're streaming games on Yahoo sports, uh, you know, there's Monday night on ESPN, all the different networks. Could you ever see yourself in a similar situation where ESPN is your main partner, but you split, um, you know, you split it up a little bit. Yeah. Listen, anything's possible. And, and when you look at the UFC has gone like this, right. We've been very lucky that technology has been going right along with us. So, um, you know, we, when we first bought this company, you had in-demand pay-per-view, uh, Dish Network and DirecTV for our, for our pay-per-views. And then you had to go out and cut all these different deals all over the world. You know, with the streaming thing is, is, is happening so fast and the technology is so good and it's getting so big. This is what I always dreamed of. My, my, my dream was always, I mean, how many people are there in the world? Seven, eight billion? Right. And we grew up on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox. You know, there's going to be those type of power players globally here in the next, you know, five to seven years. Who are they? Who are they going to be? I don't know. Amazon looks like it's definitely going to be one of them. And, uh, you know, so when I have the right fight in the right place at the right time, the whole world can watch. You know what I mean? At the same time, at the same price. That's awesome. It's, it's very you know, interesting. You know how much I love technology. I took a job at Apple for a while. You used to come in the store and I'd be in the back and all the kids would go, you're never going to believe who's out there, Dana White and Chuck Liddell. And that would be funny, you know. Um, but you know how much I love technology. So I've always thought, you know, of convergence and like, so, you know, certainly you could do this on ESPN, you know, but with the e-commerce, like I'm thinking, how cool would it be if I'm you and I'm sitting there and uh, I got Nick Diaz fighting Robbie Lawler, the fight streaming on Amazon say, but you can do it on ESPN. And I can, I want to buy a Nick Diaz uh, um, t-shirt, you know, boom, just click right on there. I'm on the site. It's already an e-commerce giant. I can buy the t-shirt or I want to buy a Robbie Lawler cap, right? I mean, is that something that you feel like can be worked on? And is something, you know, because that would be an income stream for you. That would be, you know, incredible incredible if you could pull pull something like that off i think all that type of stuff is going to happen you're going to be able to buy stuff that's inside the program you'll be able to bet uh right before the fight starts bet round around i mean it's television is going to change so much in the next 10 years it's going to be crazy it's going to be nothing like what you and i grew up watching right Right, no doubt. So my uh, eighty-inch TV downstairs isn't going to do me much good in <laughs> five a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? All right, well let's uh, let's wrap with this, Dana. Uh, uh, everybody likes when the big fights come around, and I think anytime Nick Diaz is on a card, it's a big fight card. Two title fights, Nick Diaz, uh, a lot of great fights. I love the show. I love Blades and uh, Yarzino Rosenstrike. I think it's really good. So this one seems to be set for a pretty big pay per view. What, I know you told me the other day the fight is sold out. What's the gate going to be approximately, and how big can this pay-per-view get? Do you think you can hit uh, seven figures on this one? Yeah, I don't have the up-to-date up exact gate, but it's around $5 million bucks. Gate's around $5 million, sold out, um, should be packed, and the energy, you know how that is when it's sold out arena, and you got – I mean, it, when you look at the fight card, right, I mean, the night starts out with um, uh, Jessica Andrade and Cynthia Cavillo. Right. Then it's Blades versus Rosenstrike. And then it goes right into Diaz versus Lal. I mean, it's going to be a great night. And then you have Madison Square Garden sold out, you said. Uh, so that's another one. Is that a, is that a uh, ten, uh, over $10 million gate there? Yeah. So it's, it's anywhere from eight to 10 million bucks. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. And, and that, every, event, I, every event we've put on so far this year has, has sold out. 
Every pay-per-view event has been sold out. Every event, yep. That's pretty crazy. How much are you charging people to go in the Apex, by the way? So, the, you know, for fans who don't know, there's small gatherings of people with the fight night cards at Apex, and you have a food catering set up there for them and whatnot. Uh, how much do those people pay for that? It seems like a lot of them are friends, just friends of yours, but uh, um, how, how, uh, who is it that's there, and, and how are they buying those tickets? Yeah, so what they've been doing is uh, people have been um, buying these VIP packages. So you can go into the Apex, and uh, you, you get to do – all kinds of stuff behind the scenes and jumping in the octagon after the fight and um, all that good stuff. So you, you know what the, uh, is it on UFC.com? Yeah. You go on UFC.com and uh, they have a whole uh, setup here where you can buy packages to go in there. I don't know exactly what it costs, but it's badass. It's fun. You get to interact with everybody. It's, it's, it's a very different and cool experience. I might have to sneak over and steal some of that food they have for those people lined up there. That catering always looks good. <laughs> are, are, are you telling me Lene is not feeding you guys over there? Oh, Lene, believe me, Lene takes care of us. Believe me. All right. All right. I just, I just like that, that taco truck you have out front. That looks pretty damn good. <laughs> me, anyway. me and my crew are going to come over and steal some of you guys' sandwiches that you had the other day. Yeah, they, those, those were big time. <laughs> what, what were those? Panera. Panera. Yeah, you guys had Panera sandwiches. Those were good. Those were big time. Dana, I'm going to let you roll. I will see you uh, at the Park MGM in a little bit. Thank you so much. Good luck with UFC 266. Thank you, my friend. See you.